doing, lady? Thanks. Thanks for the ride. Well, the first year of acting was theater. Um, I started out in Philadelphia, did two years of a uh, particular theater company there, People's Lane Theater Company, moved to New York in 76, started trying to find work as an actor in New York, uh, worked my way up to Broadway, got involved in films in 78 with a film called The Wanderers. Um, uh, I actually got my SAG card doing stunt work, which kind of dovetails into how I got Creepshow 2. Um, the role required, the role was not only just an acting role, but it was also, it required someone who could also perform stunts. And um, so for me, it was a great joy to be able to combine two skills in one, one role. I went to get laid, George. There's this wonderful guy. He charges $150, but that's for six, count them, six orgasms. The Hitchhiker segment, it's about a woman who is smoking a cigarette in her car and, um, you know, she drops the cigarette and she's, she's under a certain amount of emotional duress and, and um, uh, uh, while she tries to brush the, the embers off of her, her, her dress, she, she slides off the road and, and hits this hitchhiker, this, this guy who was trying to get from one place to another and kills him. And she sits and she, she tries to figure out whether or not she should, what should she do next? And she does not do the honorable thing. She drives off. So, you know, the, um, the horror gods uh, uh, curse her and the, the hitchhiker begins to, to appear over and over and over again, no matter what she does to him. Uh, so it's, it's a sort of parable that has a lot to do with uh, you can never really escape your karma. I saw it as as a as an opportunity to create a character that could both horrify and make you laugh at the same time. Uh, because I mean, what happens to the guy is like it's like ludicrous. So the way I approached it was to play it really seriously, but then you know look for moments in which you 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 just think, oh my God, is this guy ever going to die? Um, I mean, I, I don't think there's ever been a character like the Hitchhiker in, in, in any, any horror film ever, so it was a really good opportunity, and um, uh, I, I still cherish the, the, the performance in the film. And, and Lois Giles was really great to work with. Um, I was very familiar with her being one of the Bond girls, and uh, so it was, it, was, it was quite an honor, actually, to, uh, to, to, to hang around Lois and, and, and discuss uh, not only the merits of this film, but some of the, her other work. Michael is a real easygoing guy. He's a really nice guy. He's, he's got really good ideas. Um, so it was, and he was easy to communicate with. He was not dictatorial. He wasn't, you know, um, um, he, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a taskmaster. He wasn't, he was just a really nice, easygoing guy that you could feel very comfortable with discussing practically any subject regarding the film. I knew what he needed, you know, to make the film work. So I wanted to make sure we covered that base. But beyond that, it was, it, was, it was up to me to create any of the extras, any of the little spices, any little things that might make this unique uh, were, were pretty much my invention. But the two of us collaborated pretty nicely together. 911? Yeah, I want to report a hit and run. The victim's apparently dead. Hey, what, what's happening? What do you think's happening? The guy got creamed, that's what happened. Happens all the time. We shot Creep Show 2 in Bangor, Maine, and it was um, at the beginning of the winter, the end of the fall, and it was a very, very difficult shoot because we shot all nights. There's not one day scene in the entire movie, in the entire vignette. Um, it was usually somewhere between 8 degrees and 12 degrees every night, uh, so it was freezing cold. It was um, uh, windy. Uh, the crew was really tired because they had done two, two other previous segments that were also very difficult physically to, to, to execute. So, you know, everyone was real tired, and I also saw it as part of my... I was the freshest guy in the entire crew. So I sort of saw it as my job to, um, to, to keep it as light as possible.
Everything that you saw in, and everything that you see in Creepshow 2 was practical. There were, there's no CGI, there are no dummies, there are no um, uh, doubles. I doubled myself. And uh, when you see me like um, banging on the hood of the car or, or the top of the car and we're driving through the forest and the trees are smashing out, all over the place, and when you see me um, sliding off the road, when you see me get hit by the car, I actually did about five car hits. We did about five separate takes. So, so I did everything that you actually see. Everything that happened to the hitchhiker happened to me. What happened, Mrs. Lansing? I, I, I ran over some guy, and over, and over, and over, and... The most dangerous scene was when the hitchhiker is on the front of the car, on the hood, and she punches the gas and she shoots through a guardrail and, and gets airborne and goes down in a gravel pit. Well, I was on the front of that car. We, we, we took the, the, the radiator out um, and put the radiator in the trunk. I was able to stick my leg so I could fit my leg on the side of the engine and we, we, we carabinered myself to the, to the frame of the car so that I could bounce up and down without falling off, and we did it, you know, and I was banging on the car, and we went all the way down in this gravel pit. Now, that took, that took a certain amount of engineering and a certain amount of preparation. So, you know, that's what most of, most of our time was spent sort of preparing and engineering for these gags so that uh, I wouldn't get hurt nor we wouldn't hurt anyone else. <laughs> All right, and this is uh, Larry Berger, our uh, makeup <laughs> effects expert. <laughs> oh, Larry. They were really young, they were really ambitious, and they had a, a passion, a deep, deep passion for the work they were doing. And any time you have special effects makeup people working on you who have a deep love and a deep passion for what they're doing, the, the entire job becomes 50% easier because you're spending a lot of time with those people every single day. And we had nothing but laughs. We had no, it was nothing but fun, but it was hard work. And, and, and I, I, I had nothing but the, the most respect for those guys. Like the Westmorelands, I've done a bunch of Star Treks. And, it's the same thing, you know. They have a passion, they have a love for, for, for special effects makeup, and it transcends, it, it translates to, to other people. It, it, and it's somewhat infectious, and I found that those guys' sense of humor, their passion for what they do was infectious as hell. <laughs> There are four, actually five, different uh, versions of, of, of the Hitchhiker in, in, in successive uh, incarnations of deterioration. And, you know, the first makeup job was, was basically just a half an hour in the chair, a couple of appliances, some blood here and there, and, and there was no problem. But, but as we get more progressive, as he gets progressively worse, the makeup jobs took longer and longer. And, um, there was a point at which I think I was sitting in the chair for two and a half to three hours before we shot and then another hour and a half to two hours after we shot. So I was putting in like um, usually 16 to 18 hour days like, like every, or nights I should say, um, every night. Um, and, uh, and, and in order to, to, to get, to get those appliances, they call them, anything that they take, and like any fake nose or, or any scar or, or, or any false eye, they, they have to be fit to your face. And in order to make that happen, you used to have to do what's called the life mask, is which you, you, you sit in a chair and they put this dental compound and they put it all over your face and they leave, and you have to sit very still and they leave two small straws out of your nose so you can breathe. And um, if you have any fear, of, of close quarters or claustrophobic in any sense, uh, it's not for you. Because um, the one thing I learned while sitting there with Howard Berger and, and, and um, Greg Nicotero running around was that um, uh, we live in our heads. You know, every, from here down, everything is sensory. But from here up, this is where you live. And to be deprived of any sensory input uh, while you're awake was very, very interesting. I, it was okay for me, but I could see how people would freak out. 
<laughs> Welcome to Creep Show 2. Stephen King and George Romero are at it again. So walk. Run. The premiere I, I have vague memories of. I just remember that there were a lot of cast and crew. And um, the audience was, was pretty excited. And, and uh, that I think um, our segment um, got quite a visceral reaction. Nice. Ah! Crypt Show 2 did not di directly have an impact on my career because, again, it's a, it's a genre film. Um, what it did have an impact on is, is, is I gained a certain amount of credibility f for, um, from, to the, uh, uh, the, the horror genre crowd. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's how I did get uh, Tales from the Hood as well, is, is, is that um, um, Rusty Cundiff and Darren, uh, his producer, had seen Creepshow 2 and, and, and said, let's, let's, let's get him. So, um, and, and I think there have been several other jobs I've actually gotten because of Creepshow 2. So it's, it's stayed within the, the, the horror family, as I like to call it. Is it right, ladies? <laughs> Creepshow 2 has withstood the, the, um, the, uh, the onslaught of time. It still holds up. For me, Creepshow 2 occupied a very specific time, um, not only in my life, but in uh, a specific time in, in, in the development of, of the genre of, of filmdom. It was 1986, and uh, y you know we were all about a certain age, and um, I, I call it one of the last really fun 80s movies that I was, that I was uh, really connected to. Um, I, I will say um, uh, f f that we, 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 had, we had a great time offset too. You know, there was a lot of hijinks. It was a lot of fun that went on in that Holiday Inn in Bangor, Maine. I'm sure that, ho that Holiday Inn never hosted another film crew for, for the rest of its days. We had, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, I'll leave it at that.